Destiny. Here's video game sophistry. Video game sophistry. Your one-stop shop for video games, news, reviews, views, and time-wasting fun. Hi, I'm Andy Burkowski from Video Game Sophistry, and I've been up all night playing Mark of the Ninja. To give you an inside scoop on this amazing new game, we have Nels Anderson, lead designer on the game from Clay Entertainment. How are you today, Nels? Very well. How are you? Very, very good. Now, Mark of the Ninja is now out, and players can get their hands on it. How would you describe the game? Um, well, Mark of the Ninja is a 2D stealth game that obviously features a ninja, but unlike nearly all the ninja games, or even more broadly, pop culture about ninja out there, it's actually about being like a ninja. Because mm-hmm. um, if you're making a stealth game, like what is what is the, the perfect fictional archetype to use? Well, it's a ninja, right? Like you know, they're they're clever, they're fast, they're sneaky. Um, but most ninja pop culture is not that. Like it's over the top, ultra violence, or it's just really cornball. Um, so we wanted to you know make a stealth game and kind of do right by the ninja. The only the only game that's ever really done this was was Tenchu, mm-hmm. like way way back. Way back, yeah. Yeah, PlayStation 2 era. Um, yeah. Well, I love, the thing I really, really love about the game is the vast differences that each player can play. Um, how can yeah. players play the game differently? Yeah, so um, that was one of my big goals design-wise from the outset. Um, mm-hmm. That's part of the reason why I like stealth games so much, is that broadly, they're not games about like instant reaction that are like fully solely predicated on survival. Mm-hmm. Um, they're more about like, you know, here's a set of tools and the tools can more liberally include just your understanding of the game systems and you can approach it however you see fit. Um, so if you want to be really aggressive, but obviously you, you still have to be sneaky, but if you want to be really aggressive and sneak up on a bunch of enemies and kind of get them in the back when they're not looking, you can do that. Um, or you can move through the whole game without actually taking out any enemies at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's certainly not easy, <laughs> yeah. but it's uh but it's it's possible. Um, or if you want to be more like deceptive and use a bunch of like smoke bombs and distractions and things like that, like it's all just about you know here here are your options, here are your tools. Approach this however you see fit. It is one of the uniquely rewarding experiences to see that ghost achievement ding in the game after you've been playing <laughs> for many many times, getting through the trial and error. Uh, kind of speaking to that, the stealth genre is so addictive. Very, very fun, but very difficult to master. I think a lot of developers don't really hit it right. What drew you to that uh, style of gameplay, and why do you think that you guys have done it correctly? Um, Well, certainly, I was drawn to it basically when I, you know, played Thief all the way back from from Looking Glass Studios, Mm -hmm. all the way back in 1998. And that was kind of the first game I played that it really felt like the world existed separately from my character. Because kind of fundamentally in a stealth game, right, the world doesn't know where you are yes. because you're hidden and sneaky. Um, so it just kind of has to sort of be operating on its own set of, you know, gears and cogs. And that's very interesting, right, because then the gameplay is about the player, like, you know, poking and perturbing and, like, affecting those systems, um, but from, like, an external way. Mm-hmm. And uh, how we got it right, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just, like... Because 2D stealth games don't really exist, right? So we already have this kind of basal challenge of stealth games aren't easy to make, and then we have to make them in a way that, like, we don't have, you know, rich templates or schema to draw upon anymore because obviously you can't just take what's done in 3D and translate it literally over to 2D. So we kind of more had to approach it by, like, looking at, you know, really what what was the ultimate experience we wanted to provide. And it was that, you know, really player-centric, choice-driven design um, look at the design decisions 3D stealth games made and then kind of deconstruct them, take them up a level and translate them back into 2D. And then beyond that, it was just a ton of trying something out, seeing it doesn't work, mm-hmm. figuring out why it doesn't work, iterating on it and just play testing the, the, the daylights out of the game. Like by an order of magnitude, mm-hmm. play tested Ninja more than we've played any other game I've ever worked on in the past or Clay has done in the past. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and it was wow. basically time well spent, but wholly necessary. Holy, yeah, especially for a game like this, when you need to be able to give players the opportunity to play in their own way and not have it mm-hmm. that you have to engage in combat, things like that, which I notice a lot of stealth games will get the stealth right, but then there'll be an instance where it demands now you do have to fight. And it, it takes right. it away, I think, in a lot of games when that happens. Yeah, no, it's, it's, 
like you really have to have both a lot of like trust and restraint Mm -hmm. when it comes to not doing that because it's like oh we want a big you know like emotionally impactful moment uh slap a giant boss fight in here and like we kind of have to say like we can't do that like that stuff is just off the table so we have to you know we have to do something else yeah Um, a little bit different here and figuring out what that other stuff is was (laughs) not easy But I think you absolutely achieved it here. Now, you mentioned that the great thing about stealth games is interacting with uh, the living world. Just uh, the cogs are happening, and you, as the stealthy ninja, affecting it to your own means. What are some of the ways that your main character will be affecting this living world? Yeah, um, I mean, one of the things, obviously, is there are you know, antagonist enemy characters in the game. Um, but unlike most games, they, they have a pretty richly um, modeled sense of their senses. Um, so they have like, you know, they, they can only see in a certain direction out to a certain distance and they have a notion of sound and things that they hear. So obviously one thing you can do is, you know, break objects in the environment or like throw down small firecrackers that will cause a distraction. And then that will kind of perturb them out of their, out of their normal behavior and you can move them somewhere else that you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's other things like, uh, breaking electrical, uh, connections so that you turn off lights, um, you know, hiding in various objects in in the environment, like creeping through the the ubiquitous man sized duct, yeah, <laughs> uh, and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the most addicting qualities of the game that I love is the level of progression, just in terms of even from overall achievements to specific collectibles and fun stuff to earn in the game. What for those who haven't played, what are some of the things they can look forward to in terms of new game modes, collectibles, and different ways that they can chart their progress? Right. Sure. Um, so at the at the at the level specific level, <laughs> um, every level has basically nine uh, honor points that you can unlock for the entire level. So three of those are derived from just a raw point score. There's like three scoring tiers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we're doing various things at level like distracting enemies or hiding dead bodies or whatever gives you more points. Um, the next three come from every level has three optional objectives. Um, and they're just completely opt in things that kind of encourage you to, you know, maybe explore mechanics you wouldn't normally or play the game in kind of a slightly different way. But again, it's all opt in stuff. It's never like, you know, Oh, here's a very hard barrier and you have to overcome it. Mm Um, and the last three things is that in every level, there are three, uh, hidden scrolls that kind of, tell the the backstory of of the clan um in a kind of an audio log esque fashion mm-hmm. except <laughs> they're all written in haiku yeah. which i think is is kind of cool <laughs> um so yeah so every level is a maximum of of nine of those points and those points you spend in between levels to unlock additional items or other abilities or things like that and, but it isn't like a big complicated skill tree where as soon as you commit to one particular path you're locked in there forever um literally the the item upgrade is all just totally flat so it's like pick the things again you know going back to that you know player centric design notion Mm -hmm. that you know it's here's a bunch of options pick the ones you think are interesting eventually if you get oh you know nine out of nine in every level you'll be able to get them all Mm -hmm. um and then uh yeah and then when you finish the game there's a new game plus mode that you know lets you play the entire game again, except with all the stuff you had before. But the enemies are more difficult, and it turns off a bunch of the um, visualizations that you've probably been used to before. So it's kind of like an extra hardcore. Challenge. It is. It is quite a jarring experience when you're used to making sure that you know where the guards are right above you, and then you look up and it's no longer there. But it adds. It's great because you have to offset that difficulty. I've noticed at least the access to the other items. So it's a very cool yeah. way to bring the new game plus. But I don't think a lot of uh, games do. They'll let you have the items, but it'll be essentially the same game. I think right. playing this again, um, there's other levels, and there's another level of difficulty that players maybe not have expected. Yeah. Now, I love in your games the very unique art direction and art style. Who's responsible for that kind of, uh, I don't want to uh, bookend it, but that slick cartoon style? And what draws you to this sort of art direction versus others? Right. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, it's it's just a it's a product of of all the artists in the studio, mm-hmm. but that is shaped, I guess, by um, our creative director Jeff Agala. Uh, he actually uh, all of our artists at some point in the past used to work on uh, feature or cartoon animation. Okay. Um, Jeff specifically worked at Atomic Cartoons for a long time on the uh, on the Canadian children's cartoon Atomic Betty, mm-hmm. um, and a bunch of other stuff, of course. Um, so that yeah, that's kind of our lineage art wise. 
Um, and I think that indeed does show in the game. Um, and we just we just kind of go with this because it's, it's our wheelhouse, I guess. Yeah, like, it's very much you know that it's a clay entertainment game when you see it, sort of thing. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think there's a lot of opportunity. Like I like two, I mean, whatever. I like three games as well, but I like two D games. But like I, some often two D games are um, like the visuals are all super nostalgic, right? Like sixteen bit yes. pixel art, and that, that's fine. Like I think games can look gorgeous that way. Like earlier this year, Fez from Polytron is Absolutely. is a beautiful game. Um, but two D doesn't necessarily have to be like retro pixel art stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's cool that there are folks like us and you know, Ubisoft Montpelier who recently did Rayman Origins, mm -hmm. which is also just beautifully animated 2D, um, that you can do stuff in 2D that's you know very stylized and innovative and new that's not just totally retro. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, um, I love in this game the great shifts that the player can have from the foreground and the background to almost make the sense of a living picture when your ninja is hiding in a vase or going beneath and you see the sounds of the steps of the guards. Now, from a design standpoint, why choose this style as opposed to more conventional options? Um, yeah, it was, it was about, more or less, it was about just being really explicit with all those core stealth systems mm -hmm. um, that we want, we want, like, I like stealth games a lot, but I can get why they can be sort of inaccessible for some folks because, like, those core stealth systems that you really need to succeed often tend to be very opaque, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, if I make a noise, is anyone else, is that guy over there going to hear it? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'll just try it and see. Oh, look, he did. Yeah. Um, Versus an owl game, like any time a noise is made that an enemy may hear, we literally visualize on the screen in like this blue arc spreading out. That's like that's how far the noise is traveling. Um, so if this visual indicator overlaps a guard, he's going to hear it. If not, he won't. Um, and we can we can kind of do we have kind of have a little bit more freedom to do that because we are in side scrolling 2D, and because the game is like a little bit more abstract anyway. That stuff when we put it in didn't feel like really exogenous or external like it it felt well integrated in a way that might be more challenging in a, in a 3d game we mentioned before you can play the game in various different ways how do you usually play um you uh, it, it depends uh sometimes i, I will just go the, the the pure ghost route um there's actually in the game there's a number of unlockable styles which are like the advanced versions of particular play styles. Mm -hmm. So, and those are unlocked by completing those optional objectives that I mentioned. Um, so there's one, the, uh, the, the path of silence where your, your footsteps when you're running, don't make noise anymore. You can carry more distraction items, but you don't have a, a weapon at all. Mm -hmm. So kind of your only option is to be, is to be sneaky. Yeah. Um, so going through that kind of radically changes how you have to approach the game, which is kind of fun. Um, so I like that, but if I'm not doing that, uh, the other thing I like to do is, uh, wh whatever enemies, um, witness something that's particularly distressing, they'll enter this terrified state where they become a lot more, uh, erratic and unpredictable and kind of, you know, unhinged. And then when they're in that state, you can ma manipulate them into accidentally shooting their allies and other stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty fun to do too. <laughs> yeah. As if you're the puppeteer sort of thing. Yes. Now, I know it is early, and it's just it's the first day release, but what has been the general consensus so far from critics and from fans, and was it what you expected? Um, no, it wasn't what we expected at all. Like, I woke up this morning, like, I walked the dog, I took a shower, and I got up, and I look on Twitter, and the thing is just exploding yeah, main, people uh, saying... Yeah, main trending thing on Twitter right now, I believe. Yeah, I don't... I We didn't expect that at all like we got um like the ratings across the board have been like the, the review scores have been like phenomenal um we got a we got a nine out of ten from Eurogamer, which was the same score they gave journey and dark souls yeah <laughs> which is uh which is pretty complimentary company to be in <laughs> um yeah no it's it's we're all just kind of sitting here jaws slack thinking <laughs> like we yeah i mean we we thought you know, when we got to, when we got to sort of the end of the road, like I was very happy with what we put together, um, but we also kind of rolled the dice in a lot of ways. Like mm -hmm. the game really, and I think this is broadly very important for, for you know as a practitioner of game design. Like w we had to have a lot of faith in the audience um, on a number of levels, and when you do that, like it's always a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it seems like our faith was not misplaced. <laughs> yeah, it's, about, it's the line of whether or not you're pushing them through a tutorial or they're going to get so frustrated they can't even play anymore sort of thing. Yeah, and, and even like, you know, the, 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 the narrative and the tone and the stuff and stuff like that in the game tends to be, it, it's pretty subtle. Like, it's never, you know, a big beat you over the head, like mm. some guy's going to be barfing exposition at you for two minutes just so you understand perfectly what's going on. Um, we really wanted to have a bit more subtlety and nuance, and that's, you kind of just got to have faith that you didn't make it too subtle or inaccessible or weird. Um, yeah. And it <laughs> seems, seems like as if that is, yeah, it seems as if you did not do that at all. Now, what is yeah. next for uh, Mark of Ninja? Can we look for any new content, or is this pretty much a standalone game? Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it like I think at the end of the game, um, things definitely do yeah. come come to a head. Um, like I think it's just the most bunk, gross thing in the world where some interesting new game ends on like this cliffhanger setting up for the sequel. Ugh. Yeah. Um, so we very much didn't do that. Uh, but there's certainly freedom to do something in the future. Um, we'd certainly like to make the game available on more platforms as well. Uh, like we'd very much like to do a version for PC. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still sorting out the exact details about that, but I think we'll, we'll probably be able to make some noise about that pretty soon. Um, very good. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> It I'm depends. just sort of, sort of a dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, any final words for those who are on the fence about the game? Um, no, I mean, of course, like, the game is available right now. If you can download the trial on your Xbox, and then that, that's, I think that's really, like, the, the proof is in the pudding, right? You can mm-hmm. try out the demo. The demo is well re- representative of what the final game is like, except the final game is just even more what you get in the demo. Um, so folks, check that out and think it's, interesting um i would encourage them to to give it a go absolutely coming from here you absolutely have to pick up this game (laughs) one of the most probably the most fun you can have in a stealth game if not absolutely this year if not just always (laughs) (laughs) well thank you very much yes uh, uh, well i'm andy burkowski from video game sophistry make sure you pick it up thank you again nels for talking to us today thank you have a good day Head to www.puresophistry.com for more.